AI is is one of these really interesting events that's happening irrespective of what people think about it. They're just unrolling it. And I think that's one of the problems with a lot of the technology is there's not a lot of deliberation or thought that goes into it. Um, technology is not neutral. There's a lot of simpletons that actually think somehow technology is a neutral phenomenon. And then how we use it uh, is simply up to us. Technologies by their very nature have behavior embedded in them. They have also uh, power embedded in them. So if you, if you take, for instance, uh, nuclear power, uh, nuclear power is, will centralize by its very nature. You, you can't have people building nuclear reactors in their backyards, right? Whereas solar power is a decentralizing type of energy. People can have solar power on their, on their uh, roofs and then they get the power. There's people that live off the grid that use, there's people live next to rivers and they have these generators that they put in the river and it, it generates water uh, from the technology. So, so AI is something, I mean, I just had dinner, I was at the Vatican and, and I was at a um, symposium on AI and I was asked as one of the people to talk about the ethics of AI and um, to be honest with you, like I'm, I'm studying it now and trying to understand it. Quantum computers is also another area because quantum computing is developing. I mean, they're right across the road, MIT. You know, it's developing at a very rapid rate, and there's going to be this emergence between quantum computing and uh, basic computing that's going to really enhance the power of computation. So, I think about the, the you know, the Kitty Hawk. You know what Kitty Hawk is? Yeah. So, I, anybody anybody remember Kitty Hawk? Nope. Yeah, the Wright brothers. Thanks. So so you know, like about 120 years ago, these two fellows down in uh, the Carolinas, they built a a, a a a glider that had like a almost like a rubber band type thing, and and they flew for like 30 seconds or something. And then you think of a stealth jet. Or I think of my grandfather who, who saw cars introduced into San Francisco, and now you think of the self-driving cars. So when you think of AI now, like they're just introducing it. It's only been around since the 1950s. So where's it going? Well, one person that I talked to, a physicist, and apparently he's a world-famous physicist, he told me it's going to eliminate the PhD uh, dissertation, which might be a good idea, you know, but he said it's going to eliminate it in qu quantitative sciences, that there will not be PhDs in, in that type of research because the AI, it works very algorithmically. But the, the conversation that I had with this man who's a head of research at one of the main uh, com uh, computer, like Microsoft type place, he told me that the, the computational power now is just so immense and the, the power to imitate and so they're, they're, these machines are learning, you know, through programming, obviously. I mean, there's programming, but they, they are learning to imitate, and that's what they're trying to do. So qu quantum computing is trying to imitate uh, nature. And, and so I don't know. Like, I got a call from an AI robot that sounded human. You know, Pat, it initially passed the Turing test. But then I noticed something, and I said... Are you a robot? And, and it went, ha, 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 do I sound that bad? And, and then I was like, are you a robot? And it said exactly the same thing. Ha, 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 do I sound that bad? And I knew it was a robot. But they're going to work it out where they, they, they can, they doesn't, it won't, it'll fool you. So I don't know. I mean, I think we should all be very troubled about these things. I'm worried about our young people growing up on all these machines. I've been talking about this since the 1990s. People thought I was crazy, thought I was a Luddite. Uh, I think everybody should read under, Lice's Under Te Technology's Thumb. You should read Langdon Winner, who was at MIT, who wrote Autonomous Technology. Read Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. That's a good place to start. I mean, do we really know what we're doing? And, 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 and I'm not a believer in, in determinism, in this idea that you can't, Oh, you can't stop progress. If it's killing you, you should. The idea of, of 
AI having life or robots having life, I don't, I don't believe that. They can imitate and look like, what, you know, the Jewish tradition has the golem, right? So, so they could create some kind of golem, but is it life? I mean, I, unless there was an embodiment of demons or something, who knows? I mean, I don't know. These are all really difficult things because we're all here in the same boat and people have different views about different things. But I would say, you know, that, the idea that it's thinking, I don't believe that. I think human beings, I don't, but I could be wrong. Uh, because, you know, if, if you pour water into a cup, is it drinking? Is the cup drinking? You know, is, 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 is the boat swimming, the submarine swimming? You know, I don't know. It depends on how you define thinking. But for us, thinking is, it's, it's, it's a very profound uh, metaphysical uh, truth that human beings uniquely think. I mean, we know that animals have some levels of perception and memory even. I mean, Aristotle talks about that. But thinking, the ability to abstract, Adam was given the ability to abstract what's called tajirid, and, and Fakhruddin al-Razi mentions this in being able to name, which is why Muslims are, are essentialists in that way, that we believe that things do have essences. And that essence is what enables us to talk about universals, the universus, the one in the many. So you're able to particularize, you're able to universalize the particular, which is why, like in logic, it's very interesting, in our traditional logic, we always use singular. And I really appreciate the fact that Dr. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm tooting his horn because you guys really have a gem over here, so I just want everybody to know this. But, you know, when you look at most modern logic books, they're, they're not written properly because they, they make it, there's a fallacy in them. When they, in all the traditional Latin and Arabic and Hebrew, they always use the singular. So they don't say all men are mortal. They will always say every man is mortal. They will say some animal is because you, you have to particularize the universal in that um, premise, right? So that's what we're talking. The human being has this ability to abstract the one in everything. And that's, that's why we're muahidun by nature. It's what God has given us. We are designed to see the one in everything and ultimately to see the one behind everything. And that's why the, the Arabic word muahidun means the one who makes one. When we say Allah is one, it's actually, we're doing it. Allah is one in reality, but to say Tawheed is a wahada yuwahidu, it's the second form, right? So it's, it's a transitive, you are making something one in your understanding. Yeah, and that is unique to the human being, and I don't believe a machine can do that. Although, when I asked um, Mr. Gill, who's, who's a PhD from um, MIT and, and really at the edge of his field on this, I said to him, okay, if, if, if you put all the cats into the, into the AI and, and then you put like all these different cats, said, what's that? The AI said, oh, that's a tabby. What's that? Ah, oh, that's a Russian blue. What's that? That's a Siamese cat. But then you showed it a cat where you shaved off all the fur, you cut its tail off, you cut its ears off. Horrible thing to do to a cat, but I'm doing this hypothetically. And, and, and then you cut off his whiskers and you just showed the, the computer the cat. And I said, would the AI see the cattiness? Would it see the essence? You know, in the same way that as a human, you can see a chihuahua and you can see a Great Dane. And I don't know how the mind does that, but you say that's the same thing, right? So he said yes. And he said yes. And if that's true, I don't know. It's amazing.